<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all if you have a PlayStation 3 running firmware 4.85 or lower, how you can jailbreak it using PS3 Exploit's latest tools. I want to give a big thank you to the PS3 Exploit team, as well as Juni for all the hard work that they have done working on these and keeping them maintained for the latest firmwares. It's been absolutely fantastic using these solutions here, so it's been fun to present them to you all. But anyways, we are going to need a few things here. First of all, we'll of course need the PS3. We're going to need a way to wire our controller to the PS3 so make sure you have a mini USB cable on hand. And we will also need a few downloads, so having an internet connection, a PC, as well as a flash drive formatted to FAT32 will all be extremely important. First of all, as a disclaimer, with a sensitive type of modification like this, there is always a chance that you could brick your system, rendering it inoperable. So I will be going through the process of backing up the NAND or NOR with you all on here, which is definitely going to be encouraged to do, just in case anything does go wrong, but that is just a heads up. I'm going to try and build in the most security I can into this tutorial here. On top of that, there is always a risk especially with custom firmware that you could get a playstation network ban so if you want to go online if you want to do this or if you want to use something to somewhat mitigate that ban such as psn patch or anything of the sort uh, that is completely up to you but you're just going to be going in at your own risk with that with all that being said let's go ahead and move over to our pc because one of the first things we need to do before we spend too much time on this is determine if your PS3 is jailbreakable, because not every PS3 can be jailbroken. Now here, I'm going to direct you to the PS3 developer wiki, and every single page I'm going to be linking will be available down below in the description. But let's go ahead and get our models out of the way. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at this photo here. If you have a fat PS3, the one on the far right, you can jailbreak. Regardless of what firmware you're on, as long as you're on 4.85 or lower, you can jailbreak with this tutorial. We just need to determine the flash type. If you have a super slim, the one all the way to the far left, you cannot jailbreak at all, so you're going to have to leave this tutorial. You can install something called PS3 HIN, which is pretty close to custom firmware. It's not custom firmware, but it has a lot of the same functionality, and I'll have a 4.85 video tutorial coming out for that after this one is released. If you have one of these slim models, you might be able to jailbreak, depending on your model and depending on the minimum firmware version your system can take. In order to test this, you can take a look at your PS3 slim versions, and if you have a model number, you have to look at this on the back of your PS3, and there is a sticker which is there. If you have a CECH 2000 model, you'll be able to jailbreak. If you have a 2100 model, you will be able to jailbreak. However, if you have a CECH 2500, you might be able to jailbreak. It's also worth mentioning here that the PS3 3000 series, which is a regular slim model, cannot be jailbroken at all. But again, if you have a regular slim, regardless of the model number that shows up on your sticker, I recommend following this step because that sticker might not be 100% accurate. As an example, if you got your PS3 used and the case was swapped at one point in its life, you might have a sticker that says that you have a 2000 model, but you might have a 2500 series model. So therefore, we're going to take this step on all slim PS3s. That's what I recommend to make sure that you can jailbreak your PS3. For this step, you'll need to go to the PS3 exploit site, and there's going to be a few messages here that will pop up. You can just read through them if you want to and press OK on them. And we need to download the minimum version checker. So for this, you go down to Flash Writer, go to click Download Minver Pup, and save this somewhere easily accessible. I'm going to save this to a PS3 folder on my desktop. Now this tutorial is also going to need to require manipulating and renaming some files. So in order to do this, I also recommend to, if you're using Windows for example, go to View and enable File Name Extensions. That way your file names will show up. So right here, it's just saying Minver Check. But if I enable it, I see that that's a zip file. And that's going to be really important to stay accurate on here. So the first thing you'll need to do is right click 
and extract this into its own folder. Now go into Minver Check. And there is a PS3 folder, an update folder, and the ps 3 updatepup file. What you can do is you can actually copy out the entire PS3 folder into your flash drive. From here, grab a flash drive, right click and format. And if you have it in FAT32, that is fantastic. If not, you're going to need to format it to FAT32. And once you do this, it is going to erase any data you care about. So if there's anything you want on this flash drive, back it up and then format. So I'm going to press OK, let it format. And now that's done. I'll go in here, paste over our minvercheck file, and it should be there just fine. So now at this point, we can right click, eject, and go back to our PS3. Now, since I'm on a fat PS3, I'm not worried about this, but again, if you are on a slim, you need to do this. And if you're on a super slim, do not continue with the tutorial. You should not be here at this point. But what you need to do is go over to your settings, go up to system update, make sure you have your flash drive plugged in with that update file, go to update via storage media, and press OK on version check. And it will give you an error here after a few seconds. Now you need this where it says update data of version. Mine says 2.45, which means I can take a jailbreak. Now if your number says 3.56 or lower, you can jailbreak your system and you can continue with this tutorial. If your system says anything higher than 3.56 right here, you cannot continue. And if you continue, you will brick your system and render it inoperable. I'm going to have to say this and really stress it because there's been many people who have disregarded this warning in the tutorial as well as the ones that I have written, and then they follow along with the whole tutorial and they brick their system at the end. I don't want you to do that. So again, if you're on 3.56 or lower, where it says right here, 3.56 or lower, you can continue. If you have a number any higher than 3.56, you cannot continue with this tutorial. Again, I would recommend either getting a jailbreakable PS3 or you can use PS3 HIN, which I still think is a pretty great solution. So that will be in another video. But for an actual custom firmware, you will not be able to install that on a system that has a minimum version of anything higher than 3.56. So final time, 3.56 or lower, you can continue. If it's any higher than 3.56, you will not be able to. Now that we know that we can continue, I'm going to back out of here and remove the flash drive and go back to our PC. So now that we've checked everything, we need to go back over to the SKU models page. And if you have a PS3 Slim, you're going to use NOR. That's what you need to remember. Use the NOR rider and the NOR dumper. If you have a PS3 FAT, you need to figure out which exact model you have. So I know based on my sticker for my PS3 FAT that I have a CECHL01 model, which means I can come down here, find CECHL, and then if I look here under flash, I have a 16 megabyte NOR. So this is where you need to determine if you have a FAT system. Again, if you have a slim, you use NOR, but if you have a FAT, models A through G use NAND. Any other model after G, such as L in my experience here, is going to be using NOR. Keep that in the back of your head. So now I know I have a FAT CECHL model using NOR Flash. So now to continue along with everything, let's go ahead and get our downloads sorted here. So the first thing we need to do, regardless of what firmware we're on, is we need to update to 4.85 HFW. It's not a custom firmware, it's a hybrid firmware. Even if you're on regular 4.85, you have to do this step because this is going to allow us to actually utilize these exploits. So on the main PS3 exploit page, you can go down to 4.85 HFW, and it will bring you to this specific post on PSX Place. And from here, you can scroll down, and this might change in the future, but you can scroll down and click the download link, which will take you to a mega page. And from here, just let this load, and you're going to need to download the zip file, which is mentioned. So this is our HFW zip, click on download. If it asks you to store files on this device, we're going to click on allow. Let's see, there we go. 
Sometimes it bugs out like that, but either way, we can just let this finish up downloading. Once you have it downloaded, select a place to save it where you can easily access it. For this tutorial, I'm not going to be hosting the site myself, I'm going to be using the ps3exploit.com site. If you ever want to take this tutorial and host these files yourself locally, uh, you can do so by going up to any of the tools and clicking on the download release files. So for the dumper and the writer, you're able to do that. But we're mainly going to be using the site, which will lessen the downloads on us a little bit. So once we have 4.85 HFW downloaded, we're also going to need to download a Pi PS3 checker. So I'm going to have another link to this, which you can check out down below in the description. And you need to go to the Pi PS3 checker standalone package, the one that's right here. Click on this, click download, and download this somewhere you can easily access it. Back on the PS3 exploit page, go down to Flash Rider, go to 4.85 HFW, and click on Download Release Files. And at this point, I'd also recommend checking out the help pages if you need any help with the dumper or the rider. Pull up the rider one specifically because this one is going to have a MD5 hash and we're going to need this later, so keep that on hand. We're also going to need a custom firmware as well as some homebrew. So I'm going to have this link to a PSX Plays page which will have the latest 4.85 custom firmware and homebrew tools, a lot of other fun stuff. So you can scroll down here, and this covers, you know, the exploits and such, but if you go to custom firmware, this will get updated with time, and it shows the regular firmwares and such that are available. If you are going to be doing this, you need to download a 4.85 or higher custom firmware, and you need to make sure it is CEX. If you see anything that is DEX, like debug or anything of the sort, don't download those. We need to go with standard CEX versions. Now you can pick any custom firmware which is going to be out there. This is going to be your choice. Uh, for this tutorial though, I'm just going to go with Overflow because that's what's available to me. For our first piece of homebrew, normally I like to recommend Multiman. This is just a really cool game manager that you can download and set up and it's easy enough to use. So for this, I recommend going down to the downloads and select the Multiman base. Even though it says 4.82, you can still use it on 4.85 custom firmware. I don't necessarily recommend getting the HIN version. For me, I was running into some issues running it, but the regular one designed for custom firmware seems to work just fine. So you can click download on the base version and save this package file somewhere easily accessible. Now, the last page I would recommend keeping on hand is this online MD5 page. You can check your MD5 hashes against your files however you want to. I'm going to be using this just because it's easier and I don't have to install anything or download anything extra. So this is just a extra safety precaution. So the two pages I recommend you keep up for the remainder of this would be the writer help section on PS3 exploit, as well as the MD5 checker. So now your downloads folder should look something like this. The first thing we need to do is install HFW. So right click and extract your HFW to its own folder. Go into that folder and you're going to have two files, a PS3 updat file and this empty folder. And both of them will come in handy. So first of all, copy out your PS3 update file, go to your flash drive, PS3, update, delete the existing update file, and then paste the new update file in here. Again, this is going to be HFW, and this is a required step regardless of what firmware you are on in order to make the jump to custom firmware. You will need to also rename this in order for it to recognize. So highlight this and delete everything prior to PS3 updat. So your file needs to be ps 3 updatpup And once that's all done, what we can do is go back to the original folder we extracted this to and you're going to copy out this hash and in order to do that we just want to make sure the firmware has downloaded successfully and is copied to our flash drive with no issues so you can copy this hash out just the name of the folder go over to the online md5 checker and click on choose file and make sure you navigate to your flash drive we want to check it on the flash drive itself so go to usb drive ps3 update ps 3 updatpup and wait for it to check. And then after a few seconds, once it's done, it gives us our hash. 
If we paste this in and click compare, we should get a nice green check mark. And if we have, then congratulations, you have downloaded and copied this over successfully. If you do not get a matching checksum, you'll need to delete the update files and re-download them, re-extract them, and check them again. That means there could be something wrong with your download. But now that we verified that, we can go back to our flash drive, right click, eject, and transfer the flash drive to our PS3. Now at the PS3, you're going to need to install this twice. It is also said that you can install official firmware 4.85 and then install HFW 4.85, but I just recommend installing HFW twice just to be safe. So you might even be installing 4.85 three times depending on what situation you're on, but this is just to ensure that everything updates accordingly. So there's two methods of updating. This first one might work for you, the second one will definitely work. So this first method, you can just go to system update once you plug in your flash drive, go to update via storage media, and it should bring up 4.85 HFW. Press OK. At this point, you can agree and press Start. And what it's going to do is it's going to copy over the update to your system and then reboot to your console. This is where you're going to need a mini USB cable as well, just to make sure that you have your controller plugged in. And if you don't need it now, you will need it for recovery mode, which I'll be showing you that as well. So here, once it checks for your update data, it should begin installing. Now, you might get an error at this point saying that you already are on the latest system version and you cannot take the update, and at that point, your system will restart. If that happens to you, don't worry about it. Just flash your firmware twice within recovery mode, which is going to be the next step. So again, if you can update through the XMB, that's great. If you cannot, we're going to do it through recovery mode. So you could do it either once in XMB and once in recovery mode, or you can do both of your flashes within recovery mode. But let's wait for this to finish installing and then it will reboot the system. All right, so once your system reboots like such, you should be on 4.85 HFW. However, it is not going to look or act any different than stock firmware, and that is fine. As long as you successfully install it without errors, you are good, but that's only one of our installs. So for our second one, we need to turn off our system, and this is the way we need to boot it up, and I'm going to show you all on video. You're going to need to go to your PS3, hold down the reset or power button until the system turns back off and then hold it down to power it on a second time and only let go when you get two quick beeps. It might take a few times for you to try it, but trust me, it does work. It will get you into recovery mode. So go ahead, turn off your PS3 and then turn it on like such to get into recovery mode. Right here is where you'll need that cable for your controller, so just press the PlayStation button and then go down to System Update, open this up, and make sure your flash drive has your HFW install on there. Press the Start and Select buttons at the same time. At this point, it's going to check the firmware, copy it over to your system, restart, and begin installing. So just wait for your system to restart. Once this pops up, press the PlayStation button, and it's going to begin checking. Go ahead, agree to the user agreement, hit enter there, and let it install the HFW firmware a second time. Again, this is going to be needed to do twice just to ensure that everything installs as need be and to prevent any type of bricking down the road or at least minimize it as much as we can. All right, once your system reboots, again, that will be the second time we install HFW and everything should be good to go at that point. So now we can continue with the actual exploitation itself. So if it isn't already, make sure your flash drive is plugged into the furthest right-hand USB port on your PS3. 
You don't have to do this, but it will make it easier just because it defaults to that USB drive or that USB port. So if it isn't in there already, plug it in. And if you can't use that for whatever reason, there will be a setting that you can change. But what you need to do is go to your internet browser. So first of all, there'll be a few settings that we need to change. Press the start button and remove the default web page from here. And we need to go to PS3 exploit. Dot com if we're using the hosted site here. And don't forget, PS3 exploit is missing the E. So press start, wait for it to launch, and there are these little messages, which they do change, so if they're different by the time you watch this video, that's kind of to be expected. But we're already on HFW 4.85, and this second message is specifically for PS3 HIN, which we are not doing. So once we're on this web page, I'd recommend press the triangle button go to tools, go to home page, and say use blank page. So that way when we start our browser, we will start in the cleanest environment that we can. Press OK. Now we need to select the pages that we need. And there's two pages we need. We need a dumper and we need a writer. So you can go all the way to the top left and go to flash dumper. And this is what we need. So go to dump flash to USB. And remember before where I said you need to pick either NAND or NOR? Remember, if you have a slim system you're doing this on, you pick NOR. If you have a fat system, you need to determine if it is NAND or NOR. Since mine is NOR, this is the page I'm going to use. And again, I'm going to do the dump flash to USB. So press X on this page. And it will say here that this requires HFW, which we do have. So you can press OK, press the select button and add it to bookmarks. So there we go, that is our NOR flash memory dumper. So now we can actually go back to this page, go to the flash writer, 4.85 HFW, write files from USB, and pick NAND or NOR depending directly on your system. I'm going to pick NOR, and again we're on HFW, and for this I'm going to press the select button, add it to bookmarks. So now our bookmarks have NOR flash memory dumper and NOR flasher. That's exactly what we need. So now press the triangle button, go to tools, and we're going to delete all of our history. So delete cookies, delete search history, delete cache, and just to be safe, I'll also delete authentication information. So press yes on all that, close out of your browser, and then reopen your browser. Now it's just a blank page as expected, but you can press the select button. And first we want to use the memory dumper. So open up memory dumper. That's okay, we're already on HFW. And this is where you can pick. So the furthest right hand USB port is dev USB 000. And the one just to the left of it is dev USB 001. So you can pick which port you're using on here. Mine is already USB 000, so that's what I'm going to be selecting. But once you are all ready to go, again, make sure you have that flash drive where you need it to be. Hit the initialize exploitation button. And once it is successful, select dump. Now, a few tips for this, because some people have complained that this has not worked or they've run into issues. First of all, if you're using a USB flash drive, I'd recommend using one that has a LED indicator so you know that something is writing to it. Many people have also reported having the greatest amount of success using a USB 2.0 flash drive, not a USB 3.0 or 3.1. I'm actually using a USB 3.0 flash drive for this, but it is a, a slower, cheaper one, so that might be why it's working. And some people have said that this might take a long time, and that might depend on your system or your flash drive or both and that's why it's important to have that LED indicator. But as long as your system is not frozen, like everything is still running and your LED indicator light is blinking, you are good. So there we go, our NOR flash dump is done. And with that, we can close out of our browser. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you're doing this with a NAND dump, it is going to take much longer than the NOR dump because it's a much bigger flash. So keep that in mind. But once we have that dumped, remove the flash drive and plug it into your PC. Back at your PC, open up your flash drive, and inside of here, there should be a dump.hex file. Now, we need to rename this to dump underscore original, 
or just something to annotate it as that. And now we can actually cut this out of here, go to the PS3 folder we've set up, and I'm going to paste it in here. And this is a super important file to have. This right here is your system's NAND or NOR. If anything happens, if you brick your system in the process, you can actually use this file if you have a E3 flasher or any type of hardware flasher, or you send your console to someone who has that, you can use this file to restore your system. So keep this somewhere safe, make a couple backups of it if you really want to, because that is our PS3 in its current working state. So now what I'd recommend doing is check your dump to make sure it's all good. I know we haven't done any patching yet, but I will show you why I'd recommend doing this. So what we can do is grab Pi PS3 Checker, right click, extract it into its own folder, and I'm going to make a copy of Dump Original and paste it in here. And now this is on Windows, mind you, but all you can do is take your Dump Original and drag and drop it onto this bat called Drag and Drop Your Dump Here and let it run. Now this is the important part. As you can see, I have no warnings, and warnings might or might not be okay, they are warnings, but what we're looking for is zero dangers. And keep this note in as well too, if you have a CECH 2500 series, you might get a false warning on here, or a false danger. So keep that in mind, but the main thing we're looking for, if we don't have that model, is we're looking for zero dangers on this dump. And now that I know my dump is all good, it's zero and zero, again, you might have some warnings, and depending on which ones, you might or might not want to avoid them. If your ROS zero and ROS one values are both matching, then we're good to go on that. You can also check down here to make sure the ROS zero offset name and the ROS one offset name are okay. But again, the big thing is number of dangers zero. So the reason why I'm doing it here before we've done any type of modifications is because if you end up getting any type of mismatches or dangers, you can easily correct it now. And the main recommendation I would have for that would be to install HFW another time, because you might have only installed it one time or only done it once successfully. So install it another time, try and get a good dump. We want those dangers to be zero. So now we have a good working original dump that is verified with zero errors, hopefully. At this point now, go to the NOR NAND writer release, extract it to its own folder, and inside of here, there should be a flash 485 hex file. Don't rename this, don't mess with it, just simply copy it and paste it to the root of your flash drive. And now we need to check this file as well to make sure that it has downloaded and copied successfully. So remember I said to keep these pages up? In the writer help section, you need to find the section where it has flash 485 hex or the JPEG and copy out the MD5 hash. Now go over to your online MD5 tool, or whatever tool you're using, and choose the file you want to check. Go to your flash drive, select the flash 485 hex file, it should check, and right click and paste the hash in here, in the compare with. Click compare, if you get a green check mark, again that means you have downloaded and copied over this file with no corruption issues. This is super important because this can actually brick your system if you have a mismatching hash. So if this does not match, do not flash it to your system, delete the file off your flash drive, delete the archive that you've extracted and such, re-download it, copy it over, check it again. These have to be matching or else you will brick your system. So now that I've verified that's matching, I'm going to go back here, eject the flash drive, and go back to the PS3. Again, on your PS3, make sure you plug in the USB drive to the furthest right-hand USB port if you can. I've already shown you how you can change that if you can't use that, but go to the internet browser. Once this loads up, press the select button, select the flasher of your choice, press OK. And now, make sure again, you have the proper port right there. We have already checked the MD5 file itself with this hash that's showing up. We've already checked that, so we aren't worried about that. And now go down to Initialize Exploitation. I recommend scrolling down a little bit, but Initialize Exploitation. Wait for this. 
and as you can see it says exploit initialization success. So now go to patch nor flash memory. And again, we need to make sure that our dump was good, we need to make sure the file itself is good, and if everything is verified and you're prepared to continue, this is kind of the point of no return here, so hit patch nor or patch nand memory, and just give it a few minutes. Your USB drive might be flashing a little bit, and then if it stops, it's fine. Just don't do anything until this is showing green and it's successful. Now, some people have also said that this page has frozen on them, and if this freezes, there are a few culprits that you can check. First of all, if you're on a FAT system, again, make sure that you got your flash right. Some people use the NOR as opposed to NAND page and vice versa, and that is built in as a protection check. So if you're trying to flash the wrong model, you might get a frozen system, and that is meant to protect you. The other thing can be if your USB drive is not being recognized. If you can't recognize a USB drive, if your system can't recognize it, or if this page cannot recognize it, you might get another freeze as well. So that's why it's good to double and triple check everything, and I'm really trying to go in with that here. So again, let's go ahead and just let this finish patching. It's going to take a few minutes, and then it will give us a success message. And that just finished up. So now that it's finished, it's now asking us to dump our NOR and check it. So what I'm going to do is close out of this page completely, open up the browser yet again, and we need to dump our flash a second time. So go to your bookmarks, go to your flash memory dumper, and then initialize again using that same flash drive. And this is why I recommended removing the dump hex file from your flash drive. But let's wait for this to initialize. There we go. And now dump it a second time. And yes, even if it took a while the first time, just do it a second time so you make sure that everything is good. Now with that completed, close out of your browser yet again, remove your flash drive and plug it into your PC. And keep your PS3 on. That's going to be another important step, just keep it on. Over at your PC, go into your flash drive. We don't need this flash hex anymore. And we have the dump hex. So I'm going to rename this to dump underscore patched. And I'm going to remove this and dump it into my PS3 folder. So there, we should have this backed up. And copy this out now. Go into your Pi PS3 checker, paste it. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Take your dump patched version and drag and drop it onto the bat file. And just like before, the results should be the same. So I have zero dangers, zero warnings, and I've already checked my ROS 0 and 1, they seem to be matching. And the reason why I had you all check this twice is because, again, if you catch it early enough before you do any patching, it's much easier to fix from there, because you can just do another firmware flash if you need to. But right here, since we have zero dangers on our patched version, we're all good to go. So I'm going to press no on there. And now at this point, we can continue onwards, and we can continue to actually installing a custom firmware. So now at this point, as I said, I needed you all to download a custom firmware of your choice. I'm just using the Overflow 4.85 version 1 firmware here, but I'm going to extract this into its own folder. And then inside of here, there is a ps 3 updatepup file. I'm going to copy that out Go to your flash drive, PS3, update, delete the existing HFW file in here, and then copy over your custom firmware. Now one thing to keep in mind is some of these firmwares, depending on where they're at, like Rebug for example, they put the MD5 hash in the file name, so you will need to rename it to PS3 update. Some of them they might have it on like a download page for example, the MD5 hash. This one, it has it inside of a pup underscore hash text file. So what I recommend doing is doing another MD5 check, this time on the custom firmware. So open this up, get your MD5 hash wherever you need to get it for your firmware, and then go to your MD5 checker. Select your firmware file, again go to your flash drive, ps3 update, ps3 updat.pup, let it read for a few seconds just to get your checksum, and then paste in the one that you've obtained and compare it. 
And if you get this check mark, that means that your custom firmware has downloaded and copied over with no corruption issues. Again, if these are different compared to what you've been supplied with, do not flash that over. You might not be able to flash it properly. You might get a corruption of some kind, or you might brick your PS3 but make sure that you can match it with whatever the author has put out. The other thing I'd recommend out of your files is to now get the homebrew that you want to install. So for this, I'm going to copy out my Multiman, go back to the root of your flash drive, and paste whatever homebrew package files into the root of your flash drive that you want to install. So now with that done, I have my homebrew, I have my custom firmware. We can go ahead, eject this, and move back over to the PS3. Over at the PS3, now that we verified our dump is working, it's all good to go, and there's no corruption with it, we now need to restart the system. So turn off your PS3 and then turn it back on. Keep in mind, if you do not restart your PS3 at that point, when you try to install your custom firmware, you're just going to get a please wait screen and you're going to be stuck. So that's why you need to restart to actually apply the patches. But make sure you have your USB drive plugged in and recognize. Go up to System Update, go to Update via Storage Media, and your custom firmware should show up. So you can press OK. And again, if you can get past that screen, you're good. If you're stuck at that screen, that probably means that you did not restart. So let this copy the custom firmware to your system. It's then going to reboot your system, install the custom firmware, and then reboot yet again. And hopefully when it reboots that second time, you'll have a jailbroken system running custom firmware. Once it restarts, it should take you back to this screen. Just let it install and do its thing. All right, so once you restart into your custom firmware, this is just uh, for anyone asking about the theme, this is just the default theme that comes with Overflow. So it looks pretty cool in my opinion. But as you can see, if you come down here, you should have install packages as a new option, which means that congratulations, you can install Homebrew and you are jailbroken running custom firmware. So I'm going to go into install packages from USB and any package files that you put in the root of your flash drive will show up here. So just press X on whichever you want to install. For this, I'm going to install Multiman, and you can check out any of the other pieces of awesome homebrew which are available. I just like to install this first because it's a pretty good game launcher and such. I'm going to press back, and now at this point, you can launch Multiman for the first time. Now just let it boot up and finish initializing after you accept the initial terms of service. One thing that I always recommend people do once they launch this is go into settings, Go all the way down to theme music is what we're looking for, theme audio, and disable that. Not only that can get a little bit annoying after a bit, but on top of that, I've also just noticed I seem to have better performance when turning that off, uh, just if I'm doing FTP transfers and such. But either way, we now are in our first piece of homebrew, so congratulations, you've been able to install this. And I even have a game loaded up right here. I just copied this to my flash drive, so it's working just fine. So after exiting out of there, I mainly just again want to show Multiman actually booting up and working. Congratulations yet again, you have now successfully jailbroken your PS3. So I do want to extend a big thank you and shout out to the PS3 exploit team whose solutions and software based tools and such using stuff like this have been absolutely phenomenal as opposed to having to rely on only hardware or tracking down a barely updated PS3. They've been putting in this work at least as a team since I believe firmware 4.81 so you can absolutely thank them for their hard work. On top of that I also want to thank Juni who had come aboard and I know worked on uh, getting 4.84 and 4.85 HFW up and running so definite big shout out to Juni as well. Now a few other things I want to mention as well if a new firmware update comes out which one probably will after 4.85 please do not immediately update. If you update to another either HFW or official firmware you will lose your jailbreak. If you ever want to update your jailbroken system you only update using custom firmware files. That is it. If you update from custom firmware to custom firmware, you will not lose your jailbreak. Now, if you want to know a bit more about what you can do with custom firmware, I do have a PS3 related playlist that I will also remember to link down below in the description. It has things, for example, like backing up your games and such and doing a few other installs. So 
like you saw where I had Painkiller running off of my USB drive, or at least I could boot it from there. If you want to do that through Multiman, I have tutorials showing how to do all that. Anyways, as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.